Today, I'm testing out another app that I think sketchnoters are going to be interested in. This time, it's GoodNotes. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to Verbal to Visual. I'm your host, Doug Neal, and I'm currently in the process of testing out a bunch of different note-taking apps on the iPad to see which might be the best fit for sketchnoters, which isn't to say that there's gonna be one best app that all sketchnoters will use for every application. There are enough different note-taking styles out there, and even just different applications that might be better suited for particular tools. But I'm on a mission to get to know what the overall landscape of note-taking apps looks like. And today I would like to take you through my first handful of experiences using the app GoodNotes. Let's jump right in. So with apps like these, I like to just hop in and start using all of the features, see if I can figure them out. Looks like there's a built-in handwriting assistant tool here, giving you a larger space to write out your text on the bottom of the screen, even though it shows up smaller within your notes. I don't particularly see myself using that feature. Here are the three pen styles available and what they each look like in different sizes as well. For me, I think the brush pen will be a go-to because of the variation you get depending on how much pressure you apply. I think that's a nice way to help your notes on this tablet feel more analog. And as far as this primary toolbar goes, I really appreciate that there's quick access to three different colors and three different brush sizes. I noticed that especially coming from Notability, the last app that I demoed, which didn't have this available at this level. It took one more step to get to this option. And for the particular application of sketch noting, I often go with a three color approach, which fits really well with what this tool offers here. Same goes for different eraser sizes, which is helpful. So here I'm getting a feel for writing with this brush, also using the lasso tool, similar to the scissor tool that I shared in Notability. That is a great one for sketch noters who want to be able to move around where a sketch or phrase lives on the page after you've written or drawn it. Similar highlighting tool as well. Again, with those three color and size options right there for you to hop quickly between. And kind of a cool shapes tool as well. If if you want to get a perfect circle or rectangle or triangle that still feels a little bit hand-drawn because of the way they vary the line weight. I could see that coming in handy for certain diagram styles, like making a pie chart. And when adding a new page, it's pretty cool to see the template options available, especially that Cornell note-taking is one of your options. The most popular video to date on this YouTube channel is one in which I described how you might merge those two note-taking styles together the structure of Cornell with some sketch noted techniques added in. So it's cool that this tool makes that approach that much more easier to use. And I was actually really impressed with the overall number of templates available. Not just the normal ones like dotted or squared or lined pages, but also things like Cornell and legal and single column or double column, weekly planners, monthly planners. Those make for really nice starting points. And it's cool that they've included that much variety, all of those different potential applications. My go-to these days though is white paper and a simple dot grid. And here I'm trying to nail down some font sizes. I like that you can customize the specific line weight of each of the three options that you have available. Noticing that one kind of has the Pentel Energel feel, my go-to pen and paper pen. And though for the most part, I like to stick with a, a single brush size during a note-taking session, I can see how you might want to switch to different ones for headings and details. Looks like you've got a pointer tool available as well, useful for making presentations or recording videos when you want to point things out but don't need to make additional marks on the page. And I like how easy it is to customize the three colors that you have up there picking from one of the few presets or looking at that larger palette of custom colors. So what you see me doing here is trying to kind of tweak the tools that are available to get to a sketch noting style that I'm most comfortable with. 
pick a handful of colors that I like, pick the best of the brushes that fit my style and the line weight that feels good to me. Practicing with some icons and simple imagery here and also playing around with the pressure variation. And here's where I noticed the difference between this brush that I'm using here and the pen that I was using when demonstrating notability. This one has a lot more variability to it. At first, I thought that might be too much variation, but I think I actually like it. I think it will take a bit more practice to kind of be intentional about when I'm putting pressure and when I'm not, but it can be a really helpful way to get to a different brush size without having to switch or change some tool setting. From there, I decided to work on an activity that I had proposed within the verbal to visual community, where the latest prompt was about sketchnoting abstract concepts, like rolling a die for luck, a pie chart to represent math, a balance scale here for comparison, a still somewhat abstract empty rectangle to filled rectangle for comprehensive, a smiley face for fun, and some pattern squiggly lines for emergence. So this was kind of a nice practice activity just to get a bit more comfortable with drawing and writing using the same brush and the same brush size. The export options seem to be pretty straightforward, which is nice. I like that you can include or not the page background in case you wanted to get rid of that dot grid. So with that little bit of experience and practice with this new tool, I decided to take it for kind of a full test run and do some sketch noting. The podcast I chose to listen to at this time was Design Matters with Debbie Millman and guest Ira Glass. Played around at first with trying to sketch out the logo of that podcast, but did not like how that was looking, so went for a much more straightforward title instead. Not surprisingly, using that lasso tool early on to help move things around. And as I was listening, I tried to pull out a few of the stories and a few of the ideas that were interesting to me, and more or less tried to use black for sketching out some imagery, blue for text, but then gray as kind of a helper color. You can see me trying to use that pressure sensitivity to make some words stand out over others. Still feels a little bit sloppy here, so again, I think that's a skill that you can practice as you get more comfortable with that particular brush. It was kind of fun to pull up a reference image of Charlie Brown to create this sketch during the point of the conversation that they were talking about peanuts, and here trying to use a combination of different colors for text, and also some imagery in gray to represent this comparison between Fiddler on the Roof and a common journalistic technique of first hooking the audience in with some comedy, but then getting to some serious stuff, which is what Ira Glass mentioned is a technique they use on the radio show and podcast, This American Life. And I didn't get through the entire podcast there, but I felt like that gave me enough of a feel for what the experience of real-time sketchnoting would be like using this tool. And I think what I noticed from that experience is that there are quite a few similarities between the latest two apps that I've been playing around with, Notability and GoodNotes. They have a real similar feel to them in that they mostly try to kind of recreate the analog note-taking experience. But I think so far, at least, I've got a slight preference toward GoodNotes. And I think I can identify three reasons why. One is the easy accessibility of switching colors and also switching your brush size. As I mentioned in that video on notability, I've recognized that the less tool switching that you can do when taking sketch notes on a digital device, the better. So that accessibility there cuts down on the tool switching. I also think I like the brush pen here within GoodNotes than the pen that I was using in Notability. There is that more extreme pressure sensitivity, but once you get practice with that, I think that leads to a lot of potential to kind of add more dynamic strokes, whether you're writing or drawing, as you're capturing ideas in this visual way. So that kind of provides the opportunity to add some more stylistic elements into your sketch notes. And when you use those stylistic elements in a way that supports the ideas that you're capturing, that's where you can get closer to the entire purpose of sketch noting in the first place, which is to remember ideas better yourself and maybe even share them in a more compelling way with others. The third difference that makes good notes stand out is that variety of template options. As I'm recording this, it's the end of the 
the week. And I'm actually excited to hop into that app, pull up that weekly planning tool and do some quick planning for next week. And yes, that's something that I could easily do on a sheet of paper or with sticky notes, but something about having that type of quick template available within a tool like this breaks down the barrier just a little bit of doing those tasks that we know are good for us. So that's where those to-do lists and weekly planners and those other templates might come in handy for you as well. I should point out that one thing that GoodNotes doesn't have that Notability does is that really cool audio record feature where you can listen back to the lecture and play back your notes. So if that's a key feature for you, then definitely go with Notability. And also just keep an eye on what the features of each of these apps and any others that you're exploring, what happens over time, because I'm sure they're all kind of continually updating what they offer, sometimes maybe trying to fill in the gaps where another app maybe has some features that theirs doesn't yet, and other times maybe trying to just kind of pave their own road and lean in on what they're already good at and not try to kind of bring in everything else that everyone else is doing. And for those reasons, it's kind of an interesting time to be exploring this landscape and getting to know these different apps and how I might use them for my sketchnoting needs. And also hear about what you're doing with your sketchnoting skills and what tablets you're using. If you'd like to connect in a deeper way around this topic in particular, come join us in our new course, Digital Sketchnoting. It's because of that course that I'm now testing out a bunch of these apps because I want to get familiar enough with them myself to share some ideas with you and to help you decide which one might be a good fit. So if you'd like to join us within that course, I've included a link down below this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the new backdrop here. I'm actually in the exact same office that I was in for the previous videos, but decided to rearrange things a little bit to get away from that dark moody vibe that for some reason I went with before. Hoping to get some things on this wall before too long so you might see that changing in some future videos. So stick around. And no matter where you're doing it, your sketchnoting and what particular tools you're using, I hope you're finding that it's a good way to engage with the ideas in your professional and personal life on a deeper level. That's the whole goal here. So keep that in mind and I'll see you again in the next video. Till then.